The Catholic world is shocked, as am I, that an archbishop of the Catholic Church would knowingly give the Holy Eucharist, the body of Jesus Christ, to a Muslim sheikh. This just happened. The videos are all over Twitter, all over the internet. And what's really disappointing in this is that the archbishop in Brazil doubled down and defended it. He even cited Vatican II to defend this situation. Let's take a look at the video of the Sheikh and the Archbishop. Here it is. All right, you see the communion line. You got the altar servers. This is classic Novus Ordo. I've muted out the audio. And you'll see that you have the, the general appointments that's about to head over to the whole. Sh so there's the, I'm going to pause here real quick. Just, just a little education. This church doesn't have a crucifix in it. It has the resurrected Christ. And this was a big deal after Vatican II. It's a Protestant move. The idea here, here is that Jesus already died on the cross. Now he's resurrected. So we don't need to depict him on the cross anymore. And so we, we're going to put statues of Jesus resurrected. Again, there's nothing wrong with the statue of Jesus resurrected. It's totally legit. But the idea that the Mass is the sacrifice of Jesus is missing here. We have the Last Supper, the Eucharist as a meal. We have Jesus resurrected. Both of these realities are true. What's missing? The Mass is a sacrifice. I just wanted to take a moment that you see this sometimes in Catholic churches, and it's sending the wrong message to the lady. In particular, it's sending the wrong message to our children. They need to know that the Mass is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ to the Father. It's the same sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. So I don't feel comfortable with the art and the architecture and the layout here fundamentally, and now we're going to see more problems as we run the tape. Stand by. This was a funeral mass. There were well-known dignitaries there, including the Muslim sheikh. And he comes up to the, he's known to be, it's not like a random Muslim walked off the street. People didn't know. Okay, here he is, white hat. Puts his hand out. Thank you. Kind of does a fake commute. What do I do with this? All right, let's watch that again. Okay, the archbishop knows that a Muslim sheikh is there. Gives the body of Christ to an unbaptized man. He rolls out. What do y'all think of this? What do y'all think of this? Here is what the archbishop had to say after all of this happened. He says, and by the way, this is uh, Archbishop Steinmetz. Archbishop Steinmetz says... Shaky is a man known in various spheres of society and maintains a respectful relationship with the Catholic Church. He was also a friend of another archbishop of Londrina, the late Don Albano Cavallin, with whom he had a close relationship. As a friend, he participated in the Eucharistic celebration and entering the communion line, received the body of Christ. Steinmetz sought to, sought to excuse the action, saying that the Muslim received communion but did not actually consume it. And it seems in the video he didn't. What happened to that host, which is worth more than all the money on earth because it's Jesus Christ? That I have not been able to find out. Now, the archbishop doubled down and cited Vatican II. All right, as if this is going to make it better. Here is what the archbishop cited. It's Vatican II. It's Nostre Aetate. And I've talked about it quite a bit here on the channel, but this is the section of Vatican II, Nostre Aetate, on the Mohammedans, the worshipers of Allah and the followers of the prophet Muhammad. It reads... This is Vatican II. All right. 
The church regards with esteem also the Muslims. They adore the one God living and subsisting in himself. Merciful and all-powerful, the creator of heaven and earth, who has spoken to men. They take pains to submit wholeheartedly to even his inscrutable decrees, just as Abraham, with whom the faith of, Is faith of Islam takes pleasure in linking itself, submitted to God. Though they do not acknowledge Jesus as God, they revere him as a prophet. They also honor Mary, his virgin mother. At times, they even call on her with devotion. In addition, they await the day of judgment when God will render their deserts to all those who have been raised up from the dead. Finally, they value the moral life and worship God, especially through prayer, almsgiving, and fasting. Since in the course of centuries, not a few quarrels and hostilities have risen between Christians and Muslims, the Crusades, this sacred synod urges all to forget the past and to work sincerely for mutual understanding and to preserve as well as to promote together for the benefit of all mankind, social justice and moral welfare, as well as peace and freedom. And quote, Nostra Aetate Vatican Duo. Let's go up to the top here. Okay, so the archbishop is saying, look, it's kind of okay that he was there at mass and that he received communion in his hand, et cetera, because, you know, Muslims, they're basically, you know, they're kind of like Catholics, you know, faith of Abraham, et cetera. But look at the doc. The church regards with esteem also Muslims. Is that true? I mean, do we hold heresy in esteem? Ever before 1960, we're like, you know what? We esteem those heretics. Read the epistles of St. John, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. He says, don't even greet the heretics. They adore the one God living and subsisting in himself. But we also know that God is living and subsisting as the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That is the reality. St. John the Apostle says, if you deny that Jesus is the Son of God, you deny the Father. Jesus Christ says, no one comes to the Father except through me. No one comes to the Father except through me. And Jesus is the Son of God. If you deny that reality, you cannot come to the Father. You can aim, I've used the analogy before, you have a bow and arrow, you can aim the bow with the arrow in that direction, but Islam is a broken bow and a broken arrow. It is not going to fly and hit the target. What is the target? Worship of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's the reality of true worship. No one can go to the Father except through Jesus Christ. I've always been confused by this passage in Nostra Aetate. Since when does the church begin to define the dogmas and the doctrines of other world religions and heresies? Is that really the, the, the role of the Catholic Church? The role of the Catholic Church is to preserve, protect, and transmit the gospel of Jesus Christ and every single dogma, doctrine, and moral teaching given to us by Jesus Christ through, scrap, through Scripture and tradition. Since when is the Catholic Church defining, clarifying, and decreeing what other religions believe and saying we esteem that? Or saying that they adore the one God when their theology explicitly states Jesus is not the Son of God. Also says they take pains to submit wholeheartedly to even his inscrutable decrees, just as Abraham, with whom the faith of Islam takes pleasure in linking itself. Remember what Jesus said. Abraham saw my day and rejoiced. Before Abraham was, I am says Jesus. Here, Jesus Christ talks about how he 
pre-existed before Abraham. That only makes sense if Jesus is the Son of God. So a Muslim may say, oh, we belong to Abraham. So do the Pharisees and the scribes and the priests at the time of Christ. Oh, we belong to Abraham. We belong to Abraham. And Jesus says, no, you belong to your father, Satan, because you reject me. I am the word of God. I am the manifestation of the Father. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is fundamental. Like I said two days ago, Catholicism, my friends, is simple. It is the Apostles' Creed. You recite the Apostles' Creed at the beginning of every rosary. You are reciting the gospel, the fundamental message. And the Mohammedans fundamentally reject everything in that creed. They do believe in the resurrection of the body. They say they believe in the life everlasting, but they don't believe it like we do. We believe that life everlasting is the beatific vision in which we are partakers of the divine nature. They believe life everlasting is virgins, some kind of a party, a Middle Eastern orgy. That's Muslim heaven. That's not heaven for the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph and John the Baptist and Peter and Paul and St. Agnes, that's not heaven to them. Virgins and an orgy. We also believe that the prophet Muhammad is a false prophet. This goes to show that once you go down the trail, We esteem heretics. They adore God with us. Lumen Gentium says they not just adore God, they worship God, no beasts in Latin, with us. Do they really? Do they come to Mass, kneel down, and adore God in the Eucharist or not? The answer is not. They do not do that. It's kind of giving a little bit too much credit here. And because of that, we now have desecration of God. It's not funny. It's not something you can shrug off as an archbishop and say, well, yeah, but the Vatican too. Or he was a very good friend of uh, the Catholic community. Very, very well, re very well received. Very, very esteemed colleague in the ecumenical movement. The man denies that Jesus is God, and he denies that that host is Jesus. To him, it's, a, it's equivalent to a cracker or a Cheez-It or a rich cracker. It means nothing. He's dressed as a Muslim. He's there as a dignitary in an ecumenical visitation, in an ecumenical fashion. The archbishop knows that. The archbishop hands him communion. He's not baptized. It's a complete complete desecration. We have to do reparations for this. This Friday, you have to fast more. We have to do more penance. We have to pray more rosaries. We have to not have that sugar in my coffee or that cream in my coffee. We got to Order not what we want, but maybe the next best. As tiny penances to say to Jesus, Jesus, I love you. I'm sorry for all these sins that we're committing down here. I just want to do something to console you in the garden. Let's look at your comments and in your questions. Check in it out right now. What do you guys think of this? Oh, before I go to your comments, get them ready, get your comments questions, but this just came out, Bishop Athanasius Schneider, dropping bombs. Catholics and Muslims share no common faith in God, no common adoration. Boom, shakalaka, boom goes the dynamite. Oh, wait, hold on, let me give you this. I'm going to read it again, and I'm going to give you a sound effect, all right? Quote, Catholics and Muslims share no common faith in God, no common adoration, end quote, Bishop Athanasius Schneider. Boom, DJ Foghorn. Catholics and Muslims share no common faith in God. There it is. Bishop Athanasius Schneider representing.
the truth, the truth. And you know what? There's going to be people that come on here and they're going to be people who say, Taylor, you know, I haven't read enough Jesuit books lately. You need to read more Jesuits. Go ask a Muslim. Muslim bro. Hey, Muslim, do you worship the Trinity? He'll say no. Hey, Muslim, do you worship Jesus? No. Hey, Muslim, do you worship the Holy Spirit? No. Hey, Muslim, do you worship the God the Father? They'll say that's blasphemy and sacrilege. God is not a father. He is Allah. So all these Catholic ecumenical fruit loops are all like, we all worship the same God, God of Abraham. They're all in these ecumenical group hugs. Go ask a Muslim and they'll say no. So this is a self-delusion on the part of modernists. They're self-deluding themselves. Going into your comments and your question... I watch this guy all the time on YouTube. Is that me? I don't know. Do y'all want to get into like an ecumenical group hug? Methodists, Presbyterians, Jesuits, Buddhists. Or can we just be Catholic? One holy Catholic and apostolic church. I mean, I really believe that all that stuff is true. And I believe that Muslims need Jesus as the son of God, not as a prophet. They need Jesus as the redeemer, the crucified and resurrected one who justifies the soul, regenerates the person through the sacrament of baptism, baptismal regeneration, seals them with the Holy Ghost and the gifts of the Holy Spirit and confirmation, and receive rightfully in a state of grace, Holy Communion. Every person, including all those people who are Muslims and read the Quran, they need to get out of those errors and they need to get in with the truth. The, uh, Grace says there's only one true church. That's the Catholic Church. Jesus is number one. Pius X would have a gamer moment. I don't know what that means. I think that means he wouldn't like this, you know. There's no communion outside the Catholic Church. Yes, that archbishop committed desecration. Shame on him. Yeah, I mean, instead of saying, I messed up, I did the wrong thing, I'm going to go do penance, he's like, well, let me read some Vatican II. It's all, Vatican II is like this trump card that gets everybody out of jail. Muslims believe that Muhammad jumped to the moon, literally. I've heard that. We all have to account for ourselves, the judge, judge. There is no defense. The bishop is wrong. Yeah. You know what? I'm wrong. I'm wrong a lot. I have to say to my wife, I was wrong. I'm sorry. Say to my kids, I'm wrong. I was sorry. And I come on YouTube and I get things wrong sometimes. And I say, you know what? I was wrong on this and I'm sorry. I want to make it right. That's just being a human. That's just, you know, you got to you gotta face when you make a mistake. And we all make a mistake. That's why I go to confession. That's why you go to confession. We make a mistake. You just say, I made a mistake. I screwed up. I'm going to try to set it right as best as I can in this life. And that's it. I mean, that's fundamental to being a Christian. Own it. Own it. And then fix it. Right? Own it and fix it. Part of the problem here is if you were doing communion on the tongue, this would not happen, Archbishop. Can we get back to communion on the tongue, my friends? Hey, Daniel K., welcome to the chat. The Muslims will convert soon. I hope so. That'd be amazing. Let's pray for it. Let's preach. Can we pray for a miracle mass conversion of Muslims through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Yes. Why don't we do that right now? Let's pray the Hail Mary together for the conversion of all the Muslims, and we'll come back to some comments and questions. Oremos. Nomine Patris et Pidi, Spiritu Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, Nunc et ora mortis nostre. 
Amen. Nomine Patris, et Fidi, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, couple comment, couple more comments and questions. Every Protestant church was created by a random guy. Jesus did not create a Bible church. Martin Luther did. Do not go to rando Christianity. That's the sum summary of that. I don't want to hear rando Christianity. I want to hear Roman Christianity, apostolic Christianity. Jacob says, usually at weddings, funerals, or Christmas, the priest will say only practicing Catholics in a state of grace can come forward for Holy Communion. Yes, that needs to happen. Needs to be, that needs to be said. When you have a thing with ecumenical dignitaries and politicians, or we saw the mayor in Chicago who's not a Catholic and who was a lesbian came up and received communion, why aren't people communicating the truth? It's not hard to do. You know? If there was something dangerous around here and people came up like, hey, you know, you're not, you're not fit to deal with this. It could hurt you. It could be bad for you. Just loving you and letting you know. When people receive communion, not in a state of grace, it's a sacrilege. It hurts their soul. It condemns them. St. Paul says that in 1 Corinthians. We don't tell Muslims and Protestants and Jews you can't receive communion because we don't like you. We say it because you have to receive it in grace. And if you don't, Paul says you commit a desecration of the body of Christ. We don't want that. We don't want that for them. So the loving thing is to say, please do not come. You are not allowed to come. Imagine if a bunch of Catholics went into a mosque and started wanting all the Muslim prerogatives and benefits, started going around like they own the place. We all know what would happen. Thanks for watching, everybody. Follow me over on Instagram. I just put up a really awesome Instagram reel. If you want to see it, go over to Instagram, Dr. Taylor Marshall. Please subscribe while you're at it here on YouTube. Tons of subscribers, like 10,000 subscribers in the last two days here on the Dr. Taylor Marshall podcast. So welcome to all the new subscribers. Really cool to watch more people discovering this channel. Love it. Please subscribe. Please continue to watch. Please share it on Facebook. Like the video if you haven't. And remember, our Lord Jesus Christ says, you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless. Godspeed.